Have you ever had a traumatic situation in your life? Come on, I think a few of us have. No, it impacts our soul. It really does something deep on the inside. Some people call it PTSD. <laughs> and it's a, a trauma, <laughs> and it, it affects the, the inner person. And many years ago, I was driving along in the church van, and my kids were in the back of the church van on a Sunday morning coming to church, and it was just coming into winter, or actually into fall, and uh, there'd been a, a, quite a, a chill that night, and there was ice on the road, and I didn't see the ice, and I was obviously I was going a little bit too fast for the corner, and on a back road, and it was Range Road 13, I think, and I took the corner, and it slid me off into the, the bush, rolled over in the church van, and Jabex, my oldest son, is sitting in the seat next to me. He's a teenager at the time, and, and we start sliding towards this tree, and the tree's coming straight for his head. <laughs> and the, the whole thing happened so quick, and the whole time the thing's going on, it's like road rash happening to my soul. It's affecting, 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 and affecting me. And we stopped in time. He's still got his pretty face. Everything's good. <laughs> I'm just teasing. And um, he's doing okay. But every time I went on that range road, 13 after that, it would affect me. Actually, one time we were coming back from a trip overseas and the young gentleman that was driving me, one of our friends, Chris, uh, I was asleep in the back of the car and as we turned off the highway onto Range Road 13, I shot up out of my seat and said, don't take 13! <laughs> and they all laughed at me in the vehicle because he thought, oh, there's the mad pastor in the back. <laughs> but it was, it was something on the inside of me. It was, it was an effect of, of the trauma was still speaking to me. And it was a year... It was about a year later driving on that road. I still was struggling around that corner. And it's crazy, you know. It was just, just a little accident. And, um, but when, when you go through things, certain things affect people differently. And I'd been in a big crash uh, at university before I left Australia years ago. And that was part of it as well. And so I, I just want to encourage you that we, we don't need to live in that trauma. Because I love that song. He came to set us free. He came to heal us and take away the pain and take away all that, that stuff. And so looking at that, we're, we're talking about entering in this year. Revelation 3, 8, Jesus spoke this to John on the island of Patmos. I've opened a door before you that no one can slam shut. And what I'd like to focus on is the fact that when God opens a door, it's really an opportunity for something in our lives and that it's up to us to go through and take hold of it. God will never force a human to do anything. He will not force. He will not control. He will not manipulate. In actual fact, the beautiful, wonderful Holy Spirit waits on us to receive him and, and empower us. So we look at that. The title of the message today is Cheerfully Expectant People Avoid Burnout. <laughs> you know, we've got to fill up. and We fill up on hearing from God. Let's look at Romans 12, 11 and 12. We don't want to be dry. We don't want to be burnt out by trauma and situations that just wear us down. We want God to deal with that and heal us up and, and move us on in life. And he's in a process this year of doing some healing work on the inside. Who's felt a little bit of that? You know, I've, I've felt that. I've felt there's been tears in my eyes at times when I didn't need to cry. And I feel, oh my gosh, God's doing something inside of me. And uh, don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master. Cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. And there's some words there I'd like to bring out of that verse. Keep yourselves fueled. Can you say that? Keep yourselves fueled, cheerfully expectant. So the onus is upon us. Now, God works with us. And uh, so I like, I like the phrases that, um, that you can hear. You make a decision and God will work with that decision. He'll empower that, that godly decision. My wife is a very happy, jovial, loving person to be around. And I, many times she's brought me up when I'm just in my little pity party. And, and I love it being around her. She's such a happy person. But it's not by accident. <laughs> she's a lot of times, she's in the presence of God. She's in the word of God. My gosh, she's got a, a, a library with uh, almost 5,000 books in, in a house. We had 3,000 in our library and it overflowed into our bedroom. And it, it all, it, all these other places, these amazing books she reads. But I've read a few of them. Couple. <laughs> oh, gee. But she's, she's always reading and always into stuff. And she's listening to, uh, on the way to church, I'm, I'm leaving the bathroom and she's listening to Jensen Franklin this morning. I said, oh, you're just about to leave because you're listening to Pastor Jensen. At the time, she starts off with some nice music, some loud music, and then some worship music. Next minute, she starts listening to Jens, Jensen Franklin. By then, her hair's looking great and everything's, it's just a miracle. She listens to Jensen and everything looks better. And so <laughs> by that time, she's ready to get up and leave, go for Jensen. I said, I said, hey, you're just about to go, aren't you? And uh, so I had to get in and leave before her. And, but it's not by accident. And so the onus is on us 
to go to God and let him fill us up. You go to the gas station, you don't just park there unless it's someone out going to, you know, if it's self-serve, you've got to get out of the car. You've got to go pull the thing out, open the hatch, put the gas thing in, put the card in, you know, pr press the numbers and p hit the right button. Don't hit diesel if you've got a gas. And then <laughs> do the right things and then, and then take your receipt, do all the things and put the thing back on, get back in the car. And it doesn't just fill up for you unless it's a Tesla. <laughs> you go in there, the thing will put, now I'm teasing. <laughs> we don't, it doesn't, but for us, it's, the onus is on us. That we go to God, we allow him to come around us. Keep yourselves fueled. I'm so proud of you coming along to church. Turn to someone and say, you did a good thing. I'm so proud of you making it along. This is our place of refueling, refiring, and midweek coming along to small groups. You know, even this last midweek, we had a, had a worship encounter. Who thought that was awesome? I got a bit filled up in that myself. I was excited. It does stuff. You come up for prayer, and we have our prayer team up here, and you get you might even get a word from God, and it is so amazing. The things that happen are just shock and rock your world. God does love us. He wants to do good things. So a side note there is that a healthy mind leads to a healthy life. Yeah, there's a verse in Proverbs 17, 22, and it says, being cheerful keeps you healthy. Another, another version says uh, that laughter does good like a medicine. It is like a medicine to our soul to be happy and cheerful. And any time that I'm a little bit, you know, melancholy, my wife just jumps on me and tickles me. And I say, don't tickle me, don't tickle me. She says, I'm helping you live longer, Stephen. I'm helping you live longer. So cheerfully expectant of what? So it talks about that we, it, the onus is on us to be cheerfully expectant, be filled up first. You can't put on a smile. You can smile till you really mean it. But you've got to do something to get that life in you. What do you do to get the joy in you? Well, you get cheerfully expectant about what? About what God is to say to us. God is going to, he's always speaking. In actual fact, humans have been designed to hear from God. We're like radio receivers. And if the radio is not plugged in, it's not, not pushing out, but the radio waves are coming past. And, and you plug it in, then you turn it on, and then you tune it in. And next minute you hear country, any country. Okay, come on, put up your hand if you like country music, okay? And uh, do the dance and everything. What about, you know, you, know you, you might get some heavy metal. You know, and you, might, you might, might get some, you know, punk. Any punk rockers in the house here? Ryan used to be punk. Ryan, Ryan used to come to church with a big mohawk. And, uh, you know, get the egg whites or whatever he did that way and, the, and wood glue and do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and you do all that. So whatever you tune into is what comes out of you. And if you keep tuning into the trauma you've been through, all you'll ever see is trauma. All everyone, you'll cause trouble for everyone around you. That's because we're tuning into the pain and the suffering. My wife has had enough in her life to be a very miserable person. But she doesn't look miserable, does she? Because she puts effort into it. She puts effort. And so she was molested as a little girl. She's had death threats. I haven't had any death threats. Don't, don't start, by the way, online. But <laughs> well, I haven't had any death threats. I've, I've actually, I don't have much gray hair. I've actually lived a very pleasurable life. She does all the hard work. She does all the hard work of keeping happy. And then, then I lean on her to keep me happy too. No, I'm just teasing. I'm having fun. But we do this. Every human has been created to hear from God. We've got to know how to turn on the switch. We've got to know how to plug in turn. So I want to read a verse. And I'm going to share a revelation with you that will help you. Psalm 85 verse 8. This is all about hearing from God. As a believer, we might not hear from God because we're not plugged in and tuned in and switched on. Turn to someone and say, I'm going to switch you on. I'm going to switch you on. I'm going to turn you on. Okay, come here we go. I will hear with expectant hope what God the Lord will say, for he will speak peace to his people and to, to his uh, godly ones. When you put your life in God's hands, that's plugging in. When you look to him with expectancy, you're starting to tune in. But what is it that you've got to turn it on first? How do you turn it on? Well, there's a word there, peace. And that word peace in the original Hebrew is friendship. In the actual wording of it is friendship. And so you've got to look at God and his desire for you when you've put your life in his hand is not to be his enemy, but to be your friend. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Focus in on that and the, the presence of God starts coming around because his nature and character is to be a friend of every human. Come back to him, put your life in his hands and look with expectancy at what? The desire of his to be your friend and to be your best friend. And when, he's your, when you believe that, because that's what he wants to do. 
The airwaves are already going past. The radio waves are already doing that. Plug into what he's saying. He wants to be, if someone say this, God wants to be my friend. I saw this say, I am a friend of God. Jesus paid the price on the cross. He died to make us friends. I am, his, he's friendly towards me. And the moment we start to look at him from, if the, the opposite to that word in the original, in the Hebrew is wrath. It's so sad that a lot of believers think God's wrath and judgment is coming upon them. Well, that would make God a hypocrite because his wrath and judgment came upon Christ on the cross. So it is it actually, if you look at the story, it was exhausted on Jesus on the cross. It was spent. It was completely, you know, the bank account of wrath is empty towards us now. There's not, nothing left. Not even a drip, not even a drop, not even a, a whiff <laughs> of, of wrath left. No, no, there's only friendship. Come on, someone say, only friends, only friendship. And if you will go into your prayer closet, opening up, going, oh, here I am, your friend again. Here I am. You know, and you go back to him. You're not annoying to God, okay? I can be annoying in the morning. I'm a morning person. But doesn't annoy God. You get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Here I am again, God. I'm your friend. He goes, oh, there's my little friend. And you could, you could do with a little bit more sleep. But he's my friend anyway. Come on, anybody a friend of God? Look, if you want to, if you want to press the on button, and, and the whole context here is, Hearing clearly from God. Clearly there's some people out in the world there that are not hearing clearly because they're speaking judgment, criticism, condemnation. You make one mistake and then you're the enemy of God. You make one, as a Christian, you do one little thing wrong and now you're full of, you know, you get beaten up, beaten up, beaten. The church is so good at beating up, you know, and there's lots of good churches in town. But there's some people in good churches that they don't have, haven't, haven't even plugged on, haven't, haven't been turned on lately. Come on, let's have some fun with this. They haven't been turned on lately. They're, they're sad and struggling. They haven't been turned on. They need a good turn on. Okay, then come on, let's have fun with this. God, you look to his goodness. Good morning. Come on, say that to him. Good morning, God. I'm your friend. And when you do that, you flick the switch and you start seeing a manifestation of his goodness. Because you're looking at him, you're hearing clearly. Now you'll start hearing from him. Have you ever had a traumatic situation in your life? Come on, I think a few of us have. No, it impacts our soul. It really does something deep on the inside. Some people call it PTSD. <laughs> and it's a, a trauma. <laughs> and it affects the, the inner person. We don't want to be dry. We don't want to be burnt out by trauma and situations that just wear us down. We want God to deal with that and heal us up and, and move us on in life. And what I'd like to focus on is the fact that when God opens a door, it's really an opportunity for something in our lives. And that it's up to us to go through and take hold of it. God will never force a human to do anything. He will not force. He will not control. He will not manipulate. In actual fact, the beautiful, wonderful Holy Spirit waits on us to receive him and, and empower us. <laughs> you know, we've got to fill up. And we fill up on hearing from God. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled in a flame. Be alert servants of the master. Cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. So it talks about that we, it, the onus is on us to be cheerfully expectant, be filled up first. You can't put on a smile. You can smile till you really mean it. But you've got to do something to get that life in you. What do you do to get the joy in you? Well, you get cheerfully expectant about what? About what God is to say to us. God is going to, he's always speaking. In actual fact, humans have been designed to hear from God. Whatever you tune into is what comes out of you. And if you keep tuning into the trauma you've been through, all you'll ever see is trauma. All everyone, you'll cause trouble for everyone around you. That's because we're tuning into the pain and the suffering. We do this. Every human has been created to hear from God. We've got to know how to turn on the switch. This is all about hearing from God. As a believer, we might not hear from God because we're not plugged in and tuned in and switched on. When you put your life in God's hands, that's plugging in. When you look to him with expectancy... You're starting to tune in. But what is it that you've got to turn it on first? How do you turn it on? We've got to know how to turn on the switch. Well, there's a word there, peace. And that word peace in the original Hebrew is friendship. And so when we do this, hope-filled expectation of God's goodwill, the fuel that fills us up, can clearly cheer us up and bring us into that place of His goodness operating in our lives. 